Welcome to Sentara Outdoor, Sentara Pro Series. I'm Greg from Ballistic Barbecue YouTube channel. And on this video, I'm going to show you how to light and season your Sentara, Santa Maria, and Argentine grills. Let's get going. So before you use your Santa Maria grill or your Argentine grill for the first time, you wanna make sure that you get it seasoned, that you season that grate. And basically what we're doing is we're taking a fat and turning it into a polymer that's going to seal the outside of that grate. It's going to help prevent rust and it's also going to provide a really nice nonstick surface. So this is my new Sentara Pro Series Ironworks Santa Maria grill and as you can see I have the V grates on here. It does not matter whether you're using the V grates or if you have that expanded steel you're going to need to season it and the process is exactly the same. First thing I'm going to do is elevate the grates just to get them out of the way. open up the bottom door. Now for me personally, whether I'm lighting my big Argentine grill or when I'm going to light up my new Santa Maria grill, I like to use lump charcoal to get it going. If you want to use kindling wood, that's perfectly acceptable, very effective. But for me personally, it makes more sense to start off with lump. Simply, I don't want to use my cooking wood to get it going. And also, right off the bat, I'll have a nice batch of coals so that I can start my cook. So it kind of shortens the lag time as far as getting the meat on the grill. So I'm going to go ahead and add some lump charcoal to the Santa Maria. And this is what I like. When it comes to the Santa Maria style cooking or my Argentine, I look for these big old giant chunks of lump. It's really good stuff. And this is still going to add some really good wood-fired flavor to the food. Now it's time to have some fun. We're gonna light up this lump, or if it was kindling, we'd be lighting the kindling. The personal go-to is a torch. You never wanna use like a lighter fluid on this type of cooker. There's fire brick in there. The fire brick is porous, and it's going to absorb the minerals from that lighter fluid, and it's going to impose a negative flavor on your food. So try to light it with a flame if you can. You know, a charcoal chimney, something, but I guarantee you, you're going to love this. I picked this up at one of those discount hardware stores, $35, and if I didn't opt for this igniter system, it would have been $24. So this is the way to go, and you're, you're going to see it's very, very efficient. So it's connected to a 20-pound propane bottle. You can use a smaller bottle. Let's get some gas going. Adjust it with a knob here. And that's really all you need to light this. If you want to go berserk, you can pull this lever here. And you really got some BTUs going. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply some fire. We are done with the torch. Now as you can see, most of this lump has a good amount of white ash on it. And with lump charcoal, you don't need it to be 100% white. It's going to continue to burn. Again, it's like a natural wood, kind of a fuel and it's going to burn hot and long. So this is a great stuff. Now we're gonna take our ash rake that comes with the grill. I'm just gonna spread this out. Now I'm going to take a small split of wood and this is peach, it's what I have on hand. I'm gonna put it right on in here. Now I'm going to allow that lump to ignite this wood. And I like adding a little wood when I'm seasoning because the smoke is actually going to infuse into the oil that I use and it's going to just add a little bit of flavor to the to the seasoning. So when you're cooking on this, it's just like grandma's cast iron skillet. It's going to kind of release spirits of all the past cooks, including this wood we're using right now. So let's let this get going. So the wood's going, and this is all we need. I'm going to raise the front. Now I had this lowered more so you could see what was going on, but you could leave this up during the, you know, the lighting process. Now I'm going to lower the cooking grate. Out right there. I want to get these hot. And I did rinse and wipe down the V grates. All I can do now is just wait. Again, I want to get these grates hot before I start applying the oil. So now the grate is all heated up and what I was looking for is searing heat. So if I drip a little water on this grate, the water bead is going to vaporize immediately. Now we're ready to apply the oil. Now, very important on the oil. You want to use an oil with a that's tolerant to very high heats. 
do not use olive oil. What I suggest, I'm using grapeseed oil in this particular seasoning here, but grapeseed oil, avocado oil, flaxseed oil, any one of those are, are perfect. So let's get going with this. Oh, I'm using a cotton, this is called a bar mop, but it's, it's a towel, it's a terry cloth, 100% cotton towel. Uh, a, a diaper, a cotton diaper that you'd use, now they sell them, very few people use diapers on their kids anymore, but you know, they're really great for polishing your cars. You do not want to use any type of towel that has like polyester in it, any type of synthetic in it, because it'll melt onto your grill and create a mess. 100% cotton, you need to use this. So now I'm going to raise up the grate a little bit. Up to right there. Now, you wanna wear gloves. I'm using cotton liners with nitrile gloves over them, but honestly, you can't go wrong with like welding gauntlets that you know cover to here. Uh, we are using oil over heat, and it can flare up on you, so be aware of that. So I like to roll that bar mop up and put the oil in a bowl, makes it easier. Apply a nice bit of oil, but allow it to drain off. Get it just to minimize the flare up. Then we're gonna coat the grates. And you wanna make sure you're getting in there in that crevices of the grates. And again, if we were doing you know, expanded steel grate, we'd still be doing all this. I'm making sure that I'm getting 100% of this grate coated, but you don't want to use too much oil. Like you want to make sure you kind of buff it off. If that makes sense. If you use too much oil, it's going to kind of gum up. Just to make sure all of this grate surface is nice and shiny with this oil. And the nice thing about the V grates is there is that you know reservoir in the front in front of the grate so if you do apply too much it's going to kind of run off into that you still want to kind of buff it off though you don't want it too thick in there so I've got all of it coated now I'm just going over it once more again I want it to be a nice thin layer of oil kind of buffing it off right now okay now I'm going to lower the grates Right now about, this is good. I'm basically kind of parallel with the top of the, of the cooker box here. So now I'm just gonna let the heat do its magic again. We're converting this fat, this oil, into a polymer. It's gonna be beautiful jet black when we're done. So it's been about an hour since I saw you last and check it out. This is looking good. It's nice and smooth. It's getting that kind of jet black color. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up just a little bit. And we're going to apply some more of that oil, that grapeseed oil. Okay, that's looking great. Now, like before, I want it to be a very thin coat. So I'm going to kind of buff this off, get that excess oil off of here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a bit of a life hack. I'm going to call it a life hack for getting a really great patina on these grates that was discovered by Gary here at Sunterra. It involves these. These are blue diamond grill mats. What we're going to do is place these over the top of the grill grate surface here. And we're going to leave it alone. So now I'm going to go ahead and lower the grate back to where I had it. And I'm just going to leave those grates alone with these mats on there until the charcoal completely burns out. Then we'll be done with this process. And there's some type of weird reaction that's happening with these mats on top that really creates an unbelievable surface for grilling. The, the patina is just really slick and really solid. So you'll get to see that in a bit. Okay, so it's probably been a little bit more than an hour and the coals are to a point now where I'm calling this done. There's still some heat coming off, but for all intents and purposes, it's done. Now, if I weren't making a video, I would tell you, I would just leave them here until they're completely dead. But we've got a storm rolling in and I need to wrap this up. So I wanna show you how gorgeous these grates look now. It's amazing. 
So you can see the transformation. I'm going to lower this front so you can see it a little bit better. Absolutely beautiful. Jet black. And it, again, the finish on these grates, slick as ice. It's going to be awesome to cook on. Now, one last important note, and that's maintaining this patina, the seasoning that we just achieved. Here's what I do. After every cook, when I pull the meat off the grill, it needs to rest, and I just take advantage of that time to do a little maintenance. It's simple stuff. Uh, Sonterra and I endorse a product called Grill Rescue, and it's a cleaner that basically uses steam that is generated from the heat on the grates to clean all the solids off of the grates. And it's awesome because it doesn't cause any damage to this patina that we just worked for here. It doesn't damage the grates at all. And once I do that, I'm removing all of the seasoning, which usually contains salt, by the way, which is a corrosive. Then I'll just give it a one more coat of the grapeseed oil, flaxseed oil, whatever, buff it off. Then you drop those mats on there and walk away and you're done. Next cook, you'll have grates that look this beautiful. So just something to think about. We work hard for this. Well, it wasn't really a lot of work, but you worked for this finish. And you need to maintain it. Anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.